it's that we have definitely picked a lot of fruits while you shook that tree. So thank you. We'll now move on to the prepared speeches. Just a reminder and to reiterate what the timekeeper mentioned. When you see green, notice that you are still within your time. So don't panic, know that yes, all is well, you're still within whether you're two, three minutes in or four minutes in. And the yellow, midway through and the red, and remember to, to pin him. So our first speech is going to be given by Judith Navankema. And evaluate Judith Navankema, we have Alex Agaba. Alex, would you please introduce Judith? Thank you, Agnes. It's my pleasure to introduce Judith Navankema. And just a polite reminder to members and the audience that we are all evaluators here. So as Judith is speaking, please take note, take note of her speech, and then you'll be, you'll be given a chance to give her feedback after her speech. So what I'm going to take note about Judith's speech. Judith's speech is a project on level three Project two, the pathway is presentation mastery with a speech title, do you know your why? Sorry, the speech title, do you know who you are? Judith's objectives for this project is to, to practice using vocal variety. So Judith has spent some time discovering or adding vocal variety to her presentation. And today we are going to find out how she does it. Do you know who you are? Judith Navankema, over to you. Thomas Edson, you're able to hear me? Thomas Edson the inventor of the incandescent light bulb. Okay, say that. What you are, what you are will show up in what you do. What you are will show up in what you do. If you ever want to improve your life, you need to get a best understanding of who you are. You see, we all have our self-image, the picture of what we hold ourselves to be. And this picture has become the key to our lives, our destiny, and our trajectory. All thoughts, feelings, ideas, beliefs, abilities are consistent with that self-image, the picture that you hold of ourselves to be. You see, we literally act out the kind of person that we think we are. Proverbs 23 verse seven says that, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The question is, what do you think in your heart? The innermost part of you, it's not about what you think and wish to be or what you want us to think you are, but what you think in the innermost part of you. James Allen said that you are a total sum of your thoughts. You are a total sum of your thoughts. Your environment is an objectified image or a picture that you hold in your mind. It's the way we see you. As a child growing up, you were very, very, very poor. The ruling state of my mind was poverty. I didn't need to have anybody around to remind me of what kind of person I am and the background I'm coming from. 
I remember us as a child went to school. I went to us break time. The teacher would say, all right, all right, all right, kids. Go, 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 go. Go have your break, play with your friends. At that moment, being my first time at school, I paused and wondered, who am I going to play with? But because my ruling state of, my, of the mind was poverty, my conscience guided me to the right people to play with. Why? Because like attracts like. Birds of the same feathers flock together. Toastmasters, it doesn't matter what kind of commitment, the amount of determination. As long as you have a certain picture of you that you have not changed, you cannot be better. We all know when we join Toastmasters, in particular me, the kind of the picture that I held of myself. I looked at myself as nothing. They are better, you are better, I can't do it. I remember Dr. Christine used to say, Judy, you need to deliver your icebreaker. I just couldn't think myself doing it. I practiced, practiced, and practiced. I thought everything was perfect. I said, Dr. Sunshine, I'm doing it now. I said, fine, fine, you go for it. The day of my delivery, I panicked. I panicked, I sweated. Time was up for me. Our icebreaker today is Judith. Oh my God, I hoped the ground to swallow me up. But the ground could not cooperate. Why? My picture, the self-image that I had was my limiting factor. I couldn't see myself do it because I looked at myself as I cannot do it. It is for them. Are you been there? I'm starting to have an idea of it. Toastmasters, what kind of mental image do you have of yourself? What picture do you have in your mind? How do you see you? Do you see yourself as a poor person, lacking nothing? I can never amount to anything. I can never make it. My background is terrible. No, 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 no. Don't see yourself like that. That image that you have created, you can actually change it. You, you know, you're the most highest form of God's creation. You're better than what you think you are. You're better than what your environment has made you be. You're better than what other people have made you to be. But the decision is yours. If you're going to be anything better, I'm telling you, you gotta change the picture the way you see yourself to be. And I'm telling you, your destiny, your life is gonna change because you're the highest form of God's creation. And that limitation that comes around, you have the power to deal with that. Toastmaster. What a speech, Judy. Thank you so much. Like Alex mentioned earlier, we are going to do a round robin evaluation. What that means is that Alex, Judith's evaluator, is going to come up and give her an evaluation. And while he does that, please put your name in chat indicating that you would like to evaluate Judith. All of you are encouraged, even if you are a guest, just tell us how you felt about that speech so she knows what to keep up and what to improve. Over to you, Alex. Thank you, Agni Katushave, our Toastmaster of the morning. And thank you, Judith, for such a breathtaking speech. Wow. Such, such encouraging, motivational, and enriching speech in the morning. And it's really worthy for being our opener for the morning. Judith, I love your speech so much, and I'm going to point out the things that resonated with me, the things that I thought were very awesome with your delivery. First of all, I liked how you began your speech. You began your speech with a quote, and I must admit there are so many quotes in your speech, but I'm, I'm glad you began with one of them. 
I think that quote was from Thomas Edison. You had even a light bulb. What you are will show up in what you do. So that, that got me thinking, wow, we're in for a journey here, a motivational journey. The project was meant to look out for your vocal variety aspects. So I tried to focus on your vocal variety elements. When, you are speak, when your pitch was high, when your voice was loud, I was looking out for those. And I caught some of them. I noticed that you go loud with particular words, like you said, the picture, and you are loud. And I could tell that you're very intentional in becoming loud at moments of your speech. But your speech was really left with so many quotes and I think I'll just point out a few of them. As a man thinker by John Maxwell, you are a total sum of your thoughts, James Allen. Uh, there was another one, I think it was the end. There were so many, and wow, how do you even memorize all these quotes in one speech? It shows preparation, duty, and once you're prepared, your speech will go well. Why there are so many vocal variety elements? The words there, I really caught some of them, and some of them also came when you had some bits of dialogue in your speech. For example, there's a point in your speech where I think you're in class and it was break time, and your teacher, let me tell you, phrased it. I think it was break time, and the teacher came and told you guys to leave class, but he was clapping and very enthusiastic about it. All right, all right, all right, it's break time. I caught that. Your face went up, your voice went up, you were excited. So that to me means that when you have vocal variety moments, when you have dialogue in your speech, the vocal variety comes a bit easier. So I encourage you to do much more of that. You also brought, brought out another dialogue aspect at a point where you're giving your icebreaker. And I think that just those master they came and called you out and said that uh, our icebreaker today is Judy. I face the excitement and I think excitement brings out the vocal variety more. What can you do to bring that out much, much more is you could complete your dialogue. Your dialogue was one-sided. It was always one person speaking. We didn't hear the second person. The reason the quote dialogue is the die is for two. Who is the second person? I think that would, have, that, would have, that would have closed the deal for me as far as the vocal variety is concerned. Also, your face, Judy, I thought that your face could have enhanced your vocal variety more. For example, when, when a TMOD called you out, all right, all right, our icebreaker today is Judith. I thought you didn't give us enough time to internalize it. You quickly jumped onto your next line. So if you can have intentional pauses and they will, they will add much more to your pace. And this is a vocal variety project. So I think pauses, dialogue, your quotes were good. And what else? Your beginnings were good. And there's a quote action, Judith, in your speech. That's what I loved a lot about your speech. Towards the end, you, you, you close your speech very well with a, with, with a quote action, and you get into a motivational mode. I almost thought that you're kind of talking about so much religion at a Toastmaster space, but you kind of really painted it as a motivational. Uh, it was a motivational aspect of religion, and I know it, it could pass as something very motivational, not so religious, when you called us to be, to be better versions of who we are, you are better than what the world has made you seem to be, and you have the power to change your life. That will live with me, because you had a very good gesture with a, with a hand fist, and I liked how you closed your speech. Thank you, Judith. I look forward to more of your speeches. Thank you. Back to you, Agnes. Thank you very much, Alex, for that evaluation. I'll now ask, I saw Anne, you indicated you wanted to evaluate. Over to you, Anne Tasamba. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the Day. Agnes, can you hear me? Very clearly, Anne. Thank you. Good morning, everybody on the call. I'm sorry, I won't, I'm not in position to show my video. Uh, just a small addition. Thank you so much, Judith, for that most thrilling speech. And thank you, Alex. You've given a very detailed evaluation. I just wanted to say this that really touched me. Uh, Judith, you are talking about self-image. 
And even just before you told us your story of the poor self-image you had about yourself, I was just saying, wow, what a confident lady. So later on, you told us how you used to have a very poor self-image of yourself. I was saying, my God, you have really transformed. So the way you are giving your speech just reflected how you've worked on yourself and how you've built a, a positive self-image. And that you know, really came out so well that you're talking about something that you actually are. You've worked on your self-image. Your confidence was so eminent while you're giving your speech. And all I would like to say that just keep it up. You have very good self-confidence, just as your evaluator said. You had you had good gestures. You your vocal variety was good. But most that I really want to say that you gave a speech that reflected exactly what you are. Thank you so much, Judith. And that's all I had in addition. Over to you, Agnes. Thank you so much, Anta Samba, for that evaluation. I do not see any other volunteer in the chat for another evaluation. But if is there one more person as, as the gracious or child prepares to speak? OK. So I'll take on one more person. Deborah, I can see you raised your hand. Please take it on. And then we will go to the next speaker. Deborah, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Judith, well done. I was listening throughout and I was wondering whether I was listening to a Toastmasters event or to a public, <laughs> or to a public, speaker you know like a conference and so it was you were very passionate about your topic you understood it very well and you you gave us you shared with us um i think you gave us a big gift actually because you allowed yourself to be vulnerable enough to share about your past uh self-image and yes you're a very confident lady i agree with uh, i agree with the previous evaluator and so thank you for sharing that gift with us. I particularly liked the quotes, all of them very rich that you shared and Alex has already uh, quoted a number of them. I also liked your body language, um, nice background as well. So your light was clear, you stood and you, you, you drew us into your journey, into your speech. So I really liked your body language. The topic was very relevant, very much needed in these current times. So I really, really appreciate that as well. In terms of areas uh, to improve on some suggestions, um, besides what the other colleagues have mentioned, I just took note of a few, <laughs> a few slips of tongue, I think. And I, I think you said, have you ever been very, very, very poor? You could have used one, one word, um, destitute, or as poor as a mouse, you could also have used a similar thing. To make it even richer and then you i think you also use a little bit of slang when you say it, uh, it's gonna change <laughs> and so i thought oh just switch out for, for that kind of slip of that while it's yeah so that's the feedback i wanted to share with you but well done really really amazing thank you so much great thank you deborah for that evaluation so we'll move on to our next speaker and to introduce our next speaker, as well as evaluate them, we have Darius Mkwasiwe. Darius, over to you. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster of the day, Agnes Kashawi. I'm delighted to be introducing the gracious Ochao. The gracious Ochao Apuli is an acclaimed motion graphics designer an entrepreneur and speaker who has devoted his labors of maturity to enhancement of civilization. Today, Deogratius is going to be delivering on project two of his level two. And he's going to be delivering a speech on the title Pride, Pride and Prejudice. Deogratius is going to as, as part of his delivery, he's going to be looking out for his body, uh, body language, nonverbal and verbal communication. 
as his evaluator, I'll be looking forward or watching out for his awareness of intentional and intentional movement and body language. I will take note of uh, not distracting of distracting movements as well as movements that enhance your speech, De Gracias. De Gracias, you know that as we spoke, you, would, you asked me to look out for the pace of your speech. So that is one other thing that I'll be looking forward to. So De Gracias, I'm excited about the speech that you're going to deliver. The speech is titled, Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice, the gracious Ochao Apuli. Pride and Prejudice, over to you, the gracious. My mind meanders and travels across years back in time when I just joined university and I remember, unlike most courses that had a plethora of students, my course had rather few students. So in the very first few weeks of my program, I'd already known most of my course mates. And there was this specific gorgeous girl who happened to sit to my right with just two seats between us. And as most extroverts usually do, I tried to initiate in a conversation, but my actions bore no fruits. I was a very judgmental juvenile who was very arrogant in the early days, full of pride. In the following days, again, I tried to initiate a conversation with Gloria, but I noticed it didn't go beyond the scope of what we're learning in class. Over time, as time went on through the months in the semester, there's something I noticed. She grew increasingly apathetic towards me, and there was this one time in the second semester of the first year, she collected courseworks, excluding mine, and handed them over to the lecturer. This could have been because of the wild weather considering lower band, which leads to the university campus was and is still impossible whenever it rains. I, being the cocky teenager I was and full of pride, I didn't ask her why she didn't take my coursework. Nevertheless, I took, I approached the lecturer with the coursework in the right hand and an excuse in the left. She took the former while clothing the latter. In my sophomore year, I still found myself being excluded in group discussions. And remember this was a, a course that had less than 10 students. And since she was the class coordinator, I found it certainly suspecting that I wasn't informed of the group discussions. The epitome of our silent feud came in when we had what I thought was an abrupt test and yet in truth, she was informed two weeks prior. So I thought to myself, doesn't she like me? Does she personally have a, a grudge against me? Is that something that I did? I ignored that in the moment. Remember, I was an absentee in campus. But in the latter part of my sophomore year, as I increased my presence at campus and started attending lectures more frequently and was increasingly inquisitive about the things that happened when I was at campus, all of a sudden, something surreal surfaced. My misconceptions and prejudices about her started melting down under the supreme pressure of her acts of kindness. I also found out that she was the most introverted person I'd ever seen. You can go for as far as your legs can hold your body weight, and you'd barely meet someone who is as introverted as Gloria is. I later found out that she told me that she stayed inside the university campus in the West End Hall. And unlike back then when I, I couldn't find shelter and roamed around campus, hung around the trees as I enjoyed the scenery of greenery till the next lecture, she told me that I could now find refuge in our hall of residence. So I started checking in at her boarding house and as she arrives day follows night, we started brainstorming courseworks together. I also got to know her properly and personally. She started looking out for me whenever I wasn't at campus. I, she made sure I didn't miss out on any new updates. There is a, a time she did me a deed at a moment when I was really in need. Immediately after an exam, I thought I'd performed poorly. I informed her about it and in effect what she did is she convinced the lecturer to give us a remedial, knowing that the paper was rather hard. So a remedial is 
like a second coursework that a student does to help him cover up in, in case he fails to reach the 50 percentile mark. So you do a remedial to prevent you from retaking the paper the following year. She had slowly turned from a stranger who didn't care where I had run into danger to a close friend who warned me about my feeble feelings. Together we had the best of times and the worst of times. She, we looked out for each other and we celebrated our successes and encouraged the other where one of us failed. I remember there was this one time when we were, her friends and I helped her work on her dresses in the West End. And since she was going on her first date, I remember her face was clad in happiness and nervousness and she wore a remarkable rose-like red dress. And while she was in the room, I vividly remember she was glowing in beauty during day like the stars that shine bright in the night in the Milky Way. And when she started moving, she moved with gentle grace at a certain pace, like the clouds that sail above, creating a picture perfect moment every step of the way. She did portray beautiful, beauty itself portrayed her. And from afar, like a crested crane, she had an invincible crown with black hair, golden earrings. And her beauty bowed and chilled the hearts of men who were divided, but her character, like a fractured bone would leave an imprint on your soul that would last till the very end of time. Her beckoning beauty would miraculously and majestically marvel you for a day. But like an extrovert who was extremely judgmental in the early days, I was led to think that she was, an, she was arrogant and a jack and was full of pride. She was as beautiful from the outside as she was from the inside, but her introverted character would have you thinking otherwise. And while we don't communicate as frequently as we used to in a week, whenever I go to sleep, I pray to the Lord for her soul to keep. She's the kind of friend that loved and protected her space. I mean, like most introverts rather usually do, and yet no one could ever replace her place. And as I conclude, Oftentimes, our pride and prejudices we have of other people prevent us from ever finding out who they truly are. People like keeping their minds all to themselves. Try having a thought for someone else for every thought of yourself. And take this from this if this be otherwise. Even though we shouldn't trust people entirely or even barely, don't hold a lot of prejudices and before finding out who someone truly is, for you might miss out on someone whose friendship would be worth their weight in gold. Over to you, T.A. Modi. Wow. They were gracious. You should see the comments in the chat. People were on their toes. <laughs> practically waiting for what you're going to say next. But hey, we, we welcome Darius, your evaluator, to start us off as we wait for other volunteers to evaluate you, Darius. Wow, what can I say? This has been a fantastic delivery. Thank you very much, uh, Dear Gracious for taking us on this accelerating journey. Your speech has been amazing. I can say that everyone on this call, but uh, I'll use myself to say that I've really enjoyed. So thank you very much for delivering this. You've brought a lot of aspects um, that we spoke about uh, before you delivered this when we were chatting and I'm very, happy to see you implementing this. Some of these uh, were how you connect uh, your stories. So the different sections of how you moved, I, I moved a, the journey with you from when you moved to campus and you were this juvenile who was very stubborn and how you met this lady, how you interacted with her, 
and how you came to realize that you it was just prejudice that uh, was affecting your relationship. That was a great way. You connected the different parts and uh, the flow of the story could um, connect. Of course, uh, the other aspect that uh, we talked about uh, before this meeting was how you use your body language. I realized you, you used that a lot um, in your speech. From the time you started and you took us back, you could note it. Even someone who maybe couldn't hear your words would feel that you're referring to some time back. Of course, you went on throughout the presentation. I remember when you were using words like eptom, defeated, when you're expressing yourself. So that was very good of you. I liked it uh, very much. The other, I also liked your use of the English language. You had, um, you had lots of um, good words, good sentence structure, and I can say that um, everyone who is listening to you for the first time will really know that uh, Joe Gracias is a fantastic speaker. That is very nice of you. Thank you very much. Using the English language is one of the ways that uh, you can always become better as a speaker and attract the, the attention of your audience. I loved how you flowed. Uh, I noticed a few things that, uh, that I think you could have utilized to make your speech even better. Um, we talked about pace. Uh, before your speech, I realized that there is some great improvement uh, compared to your last speech. But at some point, your words would move faster. I know when you would be connecting um, the different sections of the story, you could pause a bit, which is an improvement from before. But during the speech, sometimes the words could be faster. And it is possible that um, someone could um, miss some bits. Nevertheless, the pauses that you are putting in between give someone a moment to reflect and then pick it up before you move on. The other aspect of gracious is uh, body language is very good, but when you use it a lot and uh, it becomes too much, it could distract the person from your, uh, from your message. I realized that uh, there could be need for, reg for regulating how you move your hands. At some point, they were moving very faster. Nevertheless, this has been very fantastic. I loved the way you used your hand gestures and your body language in general. I loved the way you used the English language. And I loved how you incorporated feedback from the previous presentation to deliver this. I'm very optimistic that your next presentation is even going to be way, way, way better when you consider the pace at which you use your hand gestures and also ensure that uh, you regulate the speech, the speed of the speech that you're delivering. Thank you very much, uh, Dio Gracias. Over to you, Madam Toastmaster of the day. Great, thank you, Dio. Darius for that elaborate evaluation. We'll now move on to Judith as the third uh, speaker prepares and that will be Dovina. So Judith, over to you. Well, well, well done, Joshua. I can't say any better than what he, he has said, but definitely I have something to say. I loved the way you delivered your speech. First of all, you're so poetic. And I'm certain that girl, wherever it was, she just couldn't fail to go for you. You were so poetic. Your body language was, was really rhyming with the word that you're speaking. So the message for me, it was well taken. Um, just a moment, pardon me. I loved um, the takeaway you left us as those masters when you said that, uh, we should never judge somebody, not until we interact with that somebody. 
Yes, that is very, very key because that happens most, most, most of the time and is really bad. I thank you for that because prejudice is really something that is terrible. Thank you so much. I cannot say much concerning that bit because your evaluator did a great job. But I would like uh, to tell you something that you can improve upon, the oscillation of your body really oscillates a lot in your speeches. I've been studying you for some time. Whenever you're delivering your speech, your oscillation is very, 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 very high. And that is really destructive. I think when you improve on that, you're going to be good. Otherwise, you're already good. You're growing very, very fast. Toastmaster. Great. Thank you, Judy, for that evaluation. We'll now move on to our third speaker. And to evaluate Dovina is Irene Nambasa. Irene, over to you. Good morning, Toastmasters and guests. So um, our speaker today, our third speaker today is uh, Dovina Akidi. And Vina will be delivering her icebreaker, her very first speech in the masters. And this is uh, project one, level one. The purpose of, uh, and then learn the basic structures of a speech, which is the body, the introduction, and the, and the, and the conclusion. So Davina, I will be looking out for clarity of your speech, your comfort level, the use of gestures, and this is your first speech, so that will, I'll not be very critical on how you, you deliver most of the aspects of the speech, but at least I'll be looking out for those three aspects. So ladies and gentlemen, what happened? Davina Akidi, Davina Akidi, what happened? Thank you, Irene. What happened? I used to be bold as a child. Growing up, I was bold and liked being in the limelight, even though I had zero talent. Unlike my brother, who was so talented, but never wanted to show it. I loved dancing, despite the fact that I could barely move a hip. Let's take a trip to December, 1999. A few days before Christmas, me and my elder brother, Edwin, are invited to a Christmas party at my mother's place of work. I was so excited. I knew I'd get the opportunity to show off my moves. Little did I know that my mom had only registered my brother for the dance competition. There I was minding my own business and I had an announcement for the kids dancing competition. I can't remember the song that played. All I recall my body was so excited to dance. The announcement goes on. Children whose names will be read will be coming to the dance floor to compete. I listened attentively, excitedly waiting. Edwin Toraj, I looked around for Edwin, I couldn't see him. I looked at my mom, she seemed to not know where he was. I, I was, and the list was done and Edwin didn't appear. So I looked around for him and to my advantage, I was almost the same height as the serving tables. So as I looked around, I just saw my brother hiding under the table. I approached him and asked him, Edwin, what's wrong? Why aren't you dancing? Why didn't you go and dance? His reply was, I fear dancing in front of people. I'm shy, perplexed. I couldn't understand how someone wouldn't want to show their talent, show off your moves. I really wished it was me. I would have shown them what I really had. Later during the day after the fun and games, on our way back home, I asked my mom why she didn't pick me. I clearly wanted to dance, especially to that Lingala hit that played. But Edwin is a better dancer, she replied. I internally disapproved it. The next year, I was moved to a new school and there were dance competitions for music, dance and drama. I decided to try out my luck. We were asked to line up and dance like the teacher. I really shook my body, expecting to be picked. Well, it was pure serendipity. 
I was picked on the first try. And from there on, I was picked for almost everything. Somehow, some light came on me. I was picked for drama, poetry, debates, representing the school for speeches on big events. I had more than proven to myself that I had the talent and I enjoyed every single bit of it. Finally, I was done with primary level, proud of who I was. I joined secondary school, a girls' school. And man, these girls were talented. I tried to audition, of course, and to prove to, prove to myself, no. I just wanted to audition because I'd already proven to myself. So on the first try, I wasn't picked. I let it go. I didn't try again because I knew I was bad. I was deadly. So I just let it go. Hmm. I guess you're wondering then, why are you here? You seem confident enough, right? Well, the, fu the funny thing is, I also don't know what happened. You see, the problem is, I'm not really sure what happened. I thought I had it. I thought I had the confidence, the excitement, the, the speaking and everything. Well, I can only fast forward to 2009. I was in another new school, 17 years old. I was asked to speak in front of the school, read the news to the school. Excited as always, might have been a while, but I knew I had it. I'm that girl. I've been picked for everything. I stand in front of the school assembly and my hands start trembling. My voice starts shaking. My tone was so high and yet I was on a microphone. I said, what's happening? But I stayed firm. I read through it with my shaky trembling hands, but I could barely read because my hands were shaking and I was holding a newspaper, but I finished. And that's when it happened. That's when it hit me. I had lost it. I had lost everything. Members, I would like your input on this. Was it something that happened to me along the way? Was it because I, I took a long time to be the center of attention on stage? What was it? I don't know too, but that's why I'm here at Toastmasters. Not to find out what happened, Sorry, to find out what happened and to also be a better person. Over to you, Toastmasters of the day. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> Dovina. Thank you for giving that speech. I will invite your evaluator and volunteers to evaluate after this, after Irene. So Irene, over to you. Thank you, Agnes. Oh my God. I can still see the smiles on your faces. I am sure you had the same experience I did as I listened to Davina's speech today. Davina, I cannot believe this is your first time delivering a speech in Toastmasters. You seem like you have delivered so many speeches already. I don't even know where to start evaluating. So I will start with what stood out for me in your speech. Yeah. I totally loved the use of storytelling. In the, in the winner speech, she had a number of stories for us. She took us to a trip where her mother took her together with her brother for, uh, for a dancing audition. And then we learned of the disappointment that happened when you, when you learned that you had not been uh, signed up for the audition. This was very good. We went with you to the story. We learned of your disappointment. And I mean, we felt every part of, of your story as you told it. And then I also love the use of uh, vocal variety because I learned that uh, as you gave your speech, while you told us about your disappointment, you toned your, your voice down. We felt the disappointment in your voice. And then when you were excited, uh, I, don't, I don't exactly remember that, what part of the story that was, but we felt the excitement at the moment you were excited, at the time you were excited. I think that was when you, um, you went to a new school 
and then you had to to give a speech and you were excited for the speech but then when you got to to uh, when you got onto the stage you were terrified but then at the moment of your excitement we felt that yes i also loved uh, the eye contact you kept um, your eyes onto the camera and this keeps us as your audience uh, glued to your speech and trying to listen and picking a message from whatever you are saying. Yes, we are virtual, but then we felt we felt we felt we are together in the room. Yes, um, members, you also notice how Davina has a, a rich vocabulary. She has a strong and rich use of the English language. Yeah. Most of her sentences were used correctly, and this is very good, very commendable. Um, a few areas I would uh, suggest for improvement would be your use of the or the use of the body language. Yeah. Uh, for example, where you mentioned, and then like, and then these girls were talented. Yeah, I expected that you'd you probably use make use of your hand gestures to show us oh my god this was too much for you you felt you were this good but then when you got there like these girls were extremely talented you'd make some more use uh, of your body language yes and um also to mention um i felt uh the camera was a bit of a, a bit, a bit. I was, I was just focusing on one side of your face. Yes, I, I could only see the left side of, of your eye. I, I could not properly see the other side of your face. Yes, like that. So the next time you may, you may check that out as you deliver your speech virtually. Yes, but uh, in summation, I totally loved your speech. I totally loved the dialogue, the storytelling, the vocal variety, your uh, audience, audience awareness. And maybe the area you could improve mainly is the, your body language, uh, the use of your body language or your body gestures. That would really help enhance your speech the next time you are delivering. Otherwise, you delivered your speech. This was a great icebreaker and we learned who that Dovina is, and we, I cannot wait to listen to more of your speeches. Over to you, Madam Toastmaster. Great, thank you, Irene, for the elaborate evaluation. I'll now call on other evaluators to say what you might what might, you might have missed saying. Uh, Alex, you want to take it on? Thank you, Agnes, and thank you, Dovina, for finally giving us an icebreaker. And I'll just point out one thing because I see many people want to give their feedback also. I like your storytelling, Govina, and it's a clever way of telling us who you are by sharing an event, an anecdote in your life when you're still young. Really, give, give, you give yourself away through your story and powerful story. Govina, you said that you like dancing. I didn't see it in your body. You, you didn't dance for us, yeah. Uh, then you said, I really shook my body. There was no shaking in your speech, uh, physically, right? That's, then my hands were shaking. I liked how you said shaking. <clears throat> you, prolonged, you prolonged it. Uh, you, you're giving your vocal variety already in your icebreaker. Beautifully done. But I did see your hands shake. So if you can link your vocal variety to your body gestures, you become a very perfect speaker. Thank you very much. I can't wait for a second speech. Back to you, Agnes Kachel. Thank you so much, Alex. I saw another evaluator, Jesse, please. Over to you, Jesse, evaluator Dovina. Thank you. Thank you, Agnes, and thank you, Dovina. There is a grammar teacher at Kampala Sunrise. I should come and enroll in that class. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys are doing this better than the queen. All right. So I, I thought normally I like to see how people deliver their first speeches. And I must say, Dovina, you were absolutely awesome and excellent. Keep it up. Many things have already been mentioned. I don't want to repeat them. 
but I just want to commend you for your confidence. I, I really want to, I could tell that you were in your, in your speech. I could tell that you were flowing. I mean, when you said, I looked around, those are things that you can easily forget if you have rehearsed the whole script, but you really brought yourself into the story. You did your best to tell your story as it was. You took us back on this trip. I loved the way you began. I loved the way you ended. And I liked the effort that you made to use your gesture. So keep it up. Mine is just an encouragement to say this was an excellent first speech. I look forward to you growing through the ranks and just continuing to grow and become better. There is always more that we can do at whatever we do. So keep it up. Well done and keep on going. Great. Thank you very much, Jesse, for that. Then we'll have Judith. Okay, thank you, uh, Agnes. I think just like Jesse has said, Jesse has said and uh, her evaluator, I would not say much, but uh, I would like to respond to the statement she said. Uh, she paused and said that uh, she's like she's here to find out what really happened to her. Why did she uh, end up failing to do a speech at the assembly? <coughs> and uh, Davina, I think what happened is um, when you made the audition at your secondary level and you lost it, you had you you put down your winner's image that you had before and you dressed yourself up with a loser's image and has been running through your system for a certain period of time. So when an opportunity arose for you to deliver a speech before the people, in your mind you thought you could do it as before, but that's when the picture that you hold in your mind that I was talking about came up. That limitation took over and you lost it. The issue is it's about the picture that you held in your mind that contributed to your failure to stand before the people and deliver what you wanted to deliver. Toastmaster. Thank you, Judith. And we finally have Emmanuel D as we prepare for the fourth speech from Mokisa Joshua. Emmanuel, Emmanuel D. It's Emanuela, sorry, it's Emanuela D. Thank you, Dovina. And um, this is a great delivery. And you said this is a, a nice breaker. I'm really, really imp impressed. And uh, just to add on what the rest have said, uh, I must commend you for, uh, for attempting to use the word of the day. That was impressive. I didn't notice that with the previous speakers, but you made use of the word of the day and thumbs up. Thank you. Great, thank you for, thank you, Emanuela, for that evaluation and correction. Okay, so we will have our fourth speaker, Mukisa Joshua, and to evaluate Joshua is Ochao Deogracias. Deogracias, over to you. So Joshua Mukisa is a, uh one of my favorite Toastmasters, a phenomenal Toastmaster, and he is pursuing Presentation Mastery Level 2, Project 3, which is about, which is the introduction to Toastmasters mentorship. The purpose of this project is for the speaker to not only clearly define how Toastmasters envisions mentoring, but to also share some previous aspects as excuse me, but to also share some aspect of a previous experience as a protege. And at the request of the speaker, I'll be looking out for the flow of the presentation, the hesitation and the eye contact. The title of the speech is, who is your mentor? Joshua Mukisa, who is your mentor? Who is your mentor? Joshua Mukisa. Who is your mentor? Do you even have a mentor? But before we get there, what is a mentor? The advanced dictionary defines a mentor as a teacher, a wise sage, from whom you learn. 
according to the Toastmasters, a mentor is someone who is more experienced and knowledgeable than you. And he guides you from a lifelong perspective of your personal progress in an area of interest. Not long ago, I was in a mentor-mentee relationship with an experienced advocate of the law. I remember once a month we would meet at a place of his choosing and he would guide me in the issues of life. In a particular moment, there came a time when I had to travel to boarding school, which affected the regularity of our meetings. At boarding school, I was a soccer player, the fantastic number 10. Whenever I stepped onto the pitch, I would dribble. I would swerve the ball, always netting the top corner. And each opponent of ours viewed me as the merchant of doom. And they were always scared to see me on the pitch. But what enabled me to go through my stages of progress as a classic number 10 was the consistent encouragement and beaconing of my coach. Unfortunately, my relationship with my coach was limited to soccer and everything football. But beyond that, I never had the interaction with my coach as the connection that existed with me and my mentor. So one time against the school rules and regulations, I decided to run out of school without permission to seek an encounter with my mentor, a relationship like no other, akin to an electric spark, an almost erotic sensation was aroused by the intercourse of my mentor with me as mentee. I told him about my pursuit in life to become an advocate, a lawyer like him. He was interested in the man I would become, but not just that singular perspective of my life. He also went on to look into the spiritual, the academic and social aspects of my life. He would advise me, he would guide me, he would encourage me when I was low. Something my coach never did. With him, it was, it's time to work, it's time to work. We need to go. We need to attain this particular goal that is before us. We must win the next competition. With my mentor, it was more of Joshua. How would you like me to help you? How would you love to grow? What are your interests in life? 
which areas are you finding a problem with? And as each one of us who has joined the Toastmasters, the purpose of having a mentor is to fast track you on this life self best path to speech mastery, confidence, and a greater appreciation of soft skills. By now, you should have a mentor as a member of Toastmasters. Do you have one? Have you reached out to a person you believe can be your guide, your wise search in this progress towards becoming an excellent speaker? You should understand that the mentor-mentee relationship is initiated by the prospective mentee or the prospective mentor. For those who believe they are past being a mentee, who have you reached out to as a prospective mentee and the mentor who is mentoring you? Ladies and gentlemen, the relationship of the mentee and mentor in Toastmasters is a responsibility of each one of us. Toastmaster, that is the end of my speech. Who is your mentor? Thank you so much, William, for that speech. And now I will call uh, William's evaluator. Please come on the gracious and evaluate him. You can unmute and evaluate Joshua. Yes, fantastic speech, beautiful, beautiful. One of the things I loved about Joshua's speech is the way he connected the key message to the rest of the speech. And I was looking out particularly for what he told me too, which was hesitation and the pauses. And I liked the way he started it when he said, when he was asking the question, do you even have a mentor? And he paused. I also loved the way he used the beautiful language. For instance, in somewhere where he said, to, to have an electric, he had an electric spark and almost electric sensation. That was beautiful. And the eye contact was also great. It was really great. He maintained it throughout his speech. And he also connect, he, he il properly illustrated how Toastmasters actually envisions mentoring when he told us how he was once a fantastic number 10 on pitch back in his uh, school days as a student and how he also met a mentor later in life who actually helped him fast track his life not by actually ordering him to do things, but by asking him what he actually wanted, which is exactly what Toastmasters is about because people join Toastmasters for different reasons. Some join to improve their leadership skills, some to improve their communication styles and so on and, and so forth. That was beautiful, that was beautiful. It was on point. And where do I think Joshua can improve? I think he could improve on um, the vocal variety a bit. You can oscillate on the levels of the voice. You would improve on that, I would uh, recommend. Otherwise, other than that, you did really great. And um, I think you're ready to go on to your next level on your pathway. Thank you. How about you, TMO? Thank you, Del Gracious, for that evaluation. We'll move on to Moses to also evaluate. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Joshua, for that well-delivered speech, especially on the subject of mentorship. At the beginning of this meeting, we had an education moment from our area director. And one of the four things he talked about, mentorship is a critical part. And I am happy on how you presented it in a way that makes all of us to have responsibility, both for an upward mentorship and the downward mentorship, wherever we are. 
and which I think gave everybody to remain focused on what you're speaking. Secondly, I have seen how, uh, how you've evolved from the time you joined Toastmasters, and I begin to see you having more firm, a firm, firm voice, be able to command the audience to listen to you, and have everyone glued to the screen listening to you, and even and begin, to, begin to look forward to what you'll speak next. I believe it's just the beginning of many more things to, uh, to come. And, and finally, is your consistency on delivering on your pathways in such a very short time. I believe you're now completing level two uh, in a space of possibly around two, 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 three months. A challenge to all of us who are believers on the call, who are possibly stuck on level one and moving ahead. So keep it up and uh, keep going. You can only get better. Thank you so much. How about you, Toya Modi? Great. Thank you, Mr. President. We'll have two more evaluators and we move on to our last speaker of the day. So over to you, Alex. After you, we'll have Jesse. Thank you, Agnes. And thank you, Joshua. What a calm delivery today, Joshua. You are so calm. I, I didn't know who was speaking to us today. It was not... The, the version of you today was really so calm, Joshua. I, I thought... Are you fine? Is everything fine? <laughs> but yeah, such a great delivery. I loved it. I loved it. And I will point out just one thing about your delivery. You sold the agenda for mentorship very well. If everyone is on a call today and has no mentor or isn't mentoring anyone for any reason, I'm sure today they will go home and think twice about it because you sold it for me. Uh, a mentor first tracks your progress. Whatever you're achieving, Whatever you want to achieve, whatever your goal is, when you get a mentor, a mentor will first track you there. Thank you very much. And as a club at Kampala Sunrise, it's something we're looking into growing mentorship. So thank you for really pushing that agenda to your speech. Back to you, Agnes. Thank you, Alex. And now I'll call Joshua. Please take it on from here. No, uh, Jesse. Okay. Joshua. Thank you. First of all, Joshua, I must commend you for being smart. You know, what's the chance that you'll find someone clad in a suit <laughs> on a Saturday morning? So well done. Uh, the other thing I liked about your speech was the contrast between coaching and mentoring that you brought out through your story with the way you contrasted the coach, your football, your soccer coach, and your mentor in life and career. I, I thought that was quite good and creative. The third is an area of improvement, which was mentioned by your evaluator. That was a food, uh, Deogratius. I noticed that you have a verbal mannerism that uh, could come off like, it can easily become flat. So if I could just demonstrate, then I went and met my mentor. And he guided me in the decision that I was going to take. So it, it can easily take that trend. And so you, you, I find that there are a number of many, there are many pauses in there that I felt you, it could be a bit natural to the way you speak and I understand, but being mindful of it will help you to do a bit of a flow so that your audience does, you don't lose your, the connection you have with your audience. So just being mindful of that verbal mannerisms, try to eliminate the pauses in between there and try to flow so that you can continue to captivate your audience. Otherwise, well done, great speech, keep it up. Thank you, Jesse. And our final speaker this morning is Emmanuel Barrier. And to evaluate Emmanuel is Brenda Atwine. Over to you, Brenda, to introduce Emma. Thank you, Madam Tiomodi. A very good morning to everyone. This morning, I have the pleasure to introduce our fifth speaker, Emmanuel Barrier, with a speech title. Homo erectus man has just discovered the fire. Emmanuel is uh, on the dynamic leadership pathway, level two, project two, which is communication style. And the purpose of this project 
is for the member to learn about the different communication styles and identify his primary communication style. Emmanuel, I'll be looking out for a well-organized speech about some aspects of communication styles. You may choose to speak about your communication style or the impact of the communication style on you. The speech may be humorous, informational, or the style that you may choose. Emmanuel, you have five to seven minutes to deliver this speech. Members, please welcome with me Emmanuel Barrier with a speech title, Homo Erectus Man Has Just Discovered the Fire. Homo Erectus Man Has Just Discovered the Fire. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. I hope you can hear me. Homo erectus man has just discovered fire. I'm very sure that uh, we are all familiar with uh, the Stone Age days, but also the current days. Maybe I will start with a question and ask the members what the word fintech means. Has anyone heard about such a word called fintech? It's a very popular word today. And uh, I would like to see how many people know what it is. Maybe you want to tell me. Since I can't read my messages, I would like to hear the voice. Someone who understands what fintech is. Others call it financial technology. No one? OK. Today, I'm going to share a story uh, about the early man who discovered fire. Just like they have said, the Homo erectus man who discovered fire. This is a fictional story about our own man in Uganda from Gawa down here. Having learned my communication skills, I directly came up with this fictional story, which is a mix of reality and unreality. So this early man was born in Gaba. Gaba is a, a small place, which is uh, on the shores of Lake Victoria. I decided to give him a name, Alex Agaba. since it is related to GABA. Alex Agaba is also one person that has been trying to help me with communication skills. So to you, Alex Agaba, take it as a credit. It's another way of saying thank you. My version of this fictional story starts from the early days when this Alex Agaba, the early man, in his community in Gaba, and in his daily activities, discovered fire. What happened when he discovered fire? I could say this is 1.8 million years ago when he discovered fire. In his community, it was a serious excitement. Imagine this is uh, uh, a man who has just evolved from being an ape to a, a human being. I don't know the expression, but I imagine maybe he was hitting himself like this and saying, hey, I have discovered fire. We know that fire has always existed because we have bush fires, which I believe have existed even before the birth of Jesus Christ. But people didn't know how to make fire. And uh, this Agaba man discovers how to make fire. It is such a, a good invasion or it is such a, a good discovery. So what happened when he discovered fire? All community people came around and they wanted to warm their food. They wanted to roast their, their, their beef. And they would ask the only man who has fire, Alex Agaba. So Alex Agaba discovers that there is a demand for his fire. And so he also decides to use it 
to get his other needs that he needed. So he needed a spear. And he asked those who are coming for his fire that, you know what, for you to bring your food and warm it or warm your bodies, you need also to bring me a spear. In a way, this is but a trade. So people would bring a spear or bring meat, something to exchange with fire. But uh, time came and people didn't have them immediately. So what they did is, you know, allow us to roast our meat with your fire and we'll pay later, maybe next week with uh, uh, meat or a spear or a stone. And he didn't have an issue with that. And he said, yeah, it's okay. So he starts learning how to give credit. So he, he gives credit. And before he knew it, he was a very essential man in Gaba. Everyone is coming to him. They need fire and they are coming with things. Then he learns to save. So he starts keeping some of these things and saving them here and there. And uh, his new system, his new uh, invention started spreading to the whole community. People also started learning how to save. And this gave birth to the banks that uh, we are, we've been seeing around and circles and markets. And it has continued and continued. And we know that recently there is something called the FinTech. Basically, this is the financial technology. So I, I, I started by asking you, what is FinTech? FinTech is basically the new way of transacting, of financial transaction. Talk about online banking, talk about the digital banking, talk about all this is happening and what are the examples? of uh, the fintech or the digital technology. Globally, we know that uh, people are using PayPal, people are, are, are using GoFundMe. If you are fundraising today, you are not going to move around with a basket like we used to do. If churches are fundraising, they're not going to run around asking people to give money. They will just go on, on, on their computers and uh, create their course and it, it will run all over and people will fund from wherever. They are all over the world. And this is part of, of the fintech that is going on all over the world. The financial transaction has changed and it has been evolving over a period of time. So I could give an example in Uganda locally. What are we using to transact? And we are not uh, having the physical cash. You could talk about m -Sente. I think in Kenya, they are using m -Pesa. And th there are so many ways that financial transactions are moving in a certain direction that eventually we will not see our paper money here. Uh, we will not see, people, some people have not even touched a dollar for a long time because of the new technology that many young people are calling the FinTech technology. Those masters and guests, the evolution of financial transactions has been like that. And uh, this young man, Alex Agaba from Gaba, is uh, the original or the history or the, the source of this whole evolution of, on, on how mankind has, has uh, been growing in a way of transacting. Back to you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Emmanuel Baria, for that speech. I'll now call on Brenda Atwine to evaluate. And maybe two more evaluators to volunteer. Wow, that was an excellent speech, Emmanuel. At uh, first, uh, it took me a bit of time to understand exactly what you're trying to tell us. But as we went on with you, I picked the story. So thank you so much. And um, I want to congratulate you uh, for delivering this speech effectively. Uh, first of all, I appreciate your storytelling skills. You really know how to connect stories, uh, bring out a story. Like it's it looked so surprising how at first we didn't know what you're going to, what you're going to tell us. 
but at the end, the story became more clearer. That helps us to absorb that story so well. So thank you so much. I also liked the use of statistics. As most of us, we connect with statistics when you told us about 1.8 billion years ago. I also loved the use of your body gestures, especially the hands and then the shaking at some point you beat yourself. That was quite interesting and dramatic. And then you're so smart. That also attracted us to keep, you know, looking at you, the necktie, the white shirt, excellent. Impression matters a lot and it helps us to connect very well with you. Uh, Emmanuel, you may need to work on uh, rehearsing your speech. I felt that the first few minutes, you took some time looking at, I don't know, something, either screen or piece of paper. You may want to take more time to rehearse your speech and you own it. And then you overused, you kept clenching your hands. You may want also to work on that because clenching on your hands may mean a lot of things, either fear, discomfort, and things like that. Feel free to keep your hands open. And then um, looking at your topic, which was on communication style, I struggled a little bit. You may want to again review this uh, speech to help the audience understand your communication style. And then you may want also to improve on your pronunciations. I know sometimes this is an issue of the mother tongue, but we need to work on it because it erodes on our credibility, speech credibility. Yes. Uh, Emmanuel, I challenge you to vary also your speech. Um, you tried, but you can't do better. Then you think because of visual aids, this was, um, I would say quite a complex story. Uh, so you could use just one or two slides to help the audience connect quickly to what you're talking about. I believe this speech required a visual aid. And then um, also try to keep the topic relevant. I mean, your speech relevant to the topic because this was to do with a communication style. But otherwise, this was a fantastic story. I believed everybody loved it. I loved how you connected it to Alex Agawa. You know, that was so interesting. So thank you so much, a well-delivered speech. Uh, back to you, TMOD, thank you. Thank you, Brenda, for that evaluation. I'll now invite Anne. Anne, I saw your name. Anne Tasamba, over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Agnes, Toastmaster of the day. And thank you, Emmanuel. Wow. I'd not visited Kampala Sunrise in a while. I'm so glad I was here this morning. I can see a lot of creativity with Kampala Sunrise. It was very creative, Emmanuel, the way you brought in that fiction story. The way I understand, the way I've traditionally known fintech, you, brought, you, 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 you are very innovative in explaining to us what fintech is, how you started with the Aleman, the fire, and eventually made us understand what fintech is. You know, most of us would have, you know, said, okay, we, we used to use this uh, kind of uh, money f during this time, then this and this, but you brought it in a very, very creative manner. That is very commendable. And wow, the way I was envying Alex all along, Alex Agaba, what a way to commend your mentor. You found a way to slip him in, in your story. And I thought that was most creative. And you are you were tackling uh, communication style. At first I was like, is he giving a speech on communication style? But at the end, I understood. You actually demonstrated your communication style in style. You are a person who brings stories and stories and stories to communicate. And it's up to us as your audience or your listeners to, 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 to figure out what you're saying. Probably you could have just to help those of us who are, who are a little bit slow in seeing it, you could have just found a way of, of, of telling us that that is actually your communication style. I was able to eventually uh, pick it up, but uh, not, not everybody probably would, would, keep, would, would pick it. So thank you so much. Very, very creative. 
I think I would like to copy that at some point. Thank you once again, Agnes. Great. Thank you, Anna, for that evaluation. We'll now move on to our next session of the meeting, and that is table topics. Deborah, are you here? Deborah is our table topics master. She will tell us why we should participate in table topics and take it on. Deborah? Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, Agnes. Hello, Toastmasters and guests. This specific session is called Table Topics. And Toastmasters wants to challenge members to develop their impromptu communication skills, but also to effectively think on their feet by answering unrehearsed questions. So we'll give every member an opportunity to normally speak at each meeting. Obviously, we're about 45 now, so we're not able to let everybody speak. But I'll be picking on three to four people to, to present a speech in a very impromptu manner. And so the table topics are specifically designed to develop four communication skills. That is listening, thinking, organizing, and speaking. Today, I'll be asking. Today I'll be asking questions related to the theme of the day, which is the gratitude pill. I believe we all know what gratitude means, being grateful, being thankful, being content. And your when I, if I pick on you, your response must be one to two minutes. Minimum one minute, maximum two minutes. You will see a green signal after one minute, which means you're that's your minimum time, a yellow signal at one minute and 30 seconds, and a red signal at two minutes. I would encourage you to use word of the day, which is serendipity. And I will ask the question first, and then I'll call on somebody to respond. I actually would like to invite volunteers. If you'd like to volunteer to take on a table topic, please either raise your hand, or drop it in the text uh, in the chat in the chat uh, box, and we will pick on you. And do I have any volunteers? Any hands up for table topics? No. Otherwise, I will use my discretion and pick on individuals. I would like to know if Guest Rose is present. Yes, Rose, would you like to take on a table topic? Yes. Okay. Okay, guest Rose, and then I'll come to, to Toastmaster Nora. Okay. So guest Rose, I'd like you to pay attention and then you give your speech in one to two minutes. All right. So Emerson is quoted as saying that cultivate the habit of being grateful for every good thing that comes to you and to give thanks continuously. About what do you continuously give thanks? Guest Rose, I'll repeat the, 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 the title. Cultivate the habit of being grateful for every good thing that comes to you and to give thanks continuously. About what do you continuously give thanks? Over to you, Rose. Thank you very much. One time, eight months ago, I did not have a job. All I needed, all I asked God for was a job. Three months later, I'm invited for a job interview in Jinja, to which I received news. I was a successful candidate. I was grateful. Traveling to Jinja was pure serendipity because of the lockdown and all these things that are happening around us, nowhere to get, nowhere to move. It was a hassle. Four months in the job, I realized I forgot that money that I'm receiving right now I did not have it four months back. 
But here I was complaining and grumbling about everything. What a pity. How shameful, how could I just forget that fast? I was there lamenting. I didn't know that if I had been grateful in it and everything, however small, I would live a happier and more joyous life. Toastmasters and guests present, do not be deceived by everything that you see on social. Do not compare yourself for comparison is an enemy to greatness. I would encourage you to be grateful. Even for you being online right now is great. You should be grateful for so many people do not have the opportunity to do that. In it and everything, remain grateful, even for breathing in and out. Be grateful. Thank you, guest Rose. And to think you're a guest, you're a natural toastmaster. Thank you very much, Rose. I have talked about being grateful. I would now like to call on the next speaker who will be Toastmaster, Nora Matovo. Nora. Writing a gratitude journal improves sleep. Personally, I count all the things that I'm thankful for. And I would like to ask you, what things, big or small, are you thankful for from this past week? Uh, thank you very much, uh, yeah. Table Topics Master. There are many, many things to be thankful for. One of them, I have been able to wake up every morning in the last week and I can breathe, get up. I have been privileged to have a sticker. So I've been going to the office every single day and doing my work. I noticed that where my office is located, there are three other law firms. And I had the opportunity this week to interact with the lawyers in each of those firms, which on normal days, you, you are too busy. You can't find the time to just have a conversation or just find out how are they doing? How are they managing during this uh, period when COVID is definitely cutting down the kind of work that we do. Thirdly, I am so thankful that every day I think about my children, they're all grown ups, they are working. One of them has come to visit me this morning. It's just wonderful to see the babies being able to manage their lives. And finally, God has given me a good life. Every time I think about the last so many years, this particular week, I thought about the fact that I have a home, I have a car, I have Christ as my savior and Lord. And these are things we take for granted, but they fuel, they, they make, you, 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 you have a good life, not because you are special or you, you are different, but somehow God has blessed you. And that for me is, is, is something I'm thankful for. And for this particular week, every day I would come home and just walk down the hill from my home and up again. It gave me a beautiful feeling that I have a home where I can do many things, find myself, listen to Toastmasters speaking, whether I say a word or not, and life goes on. I thank God for that. Back to you, Table Topics Master. Wow, thank you. And I think that's the bottom line to the gratitude pill, the gift of life. And life can only be as good as you make it. So well done. And uh, congratulations for noticing and appreciating and not taking for granted what you have. 
you have a good life, continue to have a good life. We urge all the other Toastmasters to make their life as good as possible, okay? By being grateful, that is. I would like to call on Davis Haguma, if you're present. Davis Haguma is a gift. Yes. Oh, okay, great. Davis, you're present. I'd like to give you a topic that you present on. So, Davis, grateful people are more likely to appreciate other people's accomplishments, which can increase your own self esteem. What, accomplish, what, what accomplishments do you appreciate? Grateful people, that's a mouthful, but let me say it again. Grateful people are more likely to appreciate other people's accomplishments, which can increase their own self-esteem. Whose accomplishments do you appreciate? Thank you very much, Table Topics Master. I once was told by a friend that I have an uncanny habit of noticing the smallest details about them that they had imagined of themselves. And I was like, what? I didn't know that about myself. And uh, from that, I realized immediately that it takes at times an outsider for you to realize what is good about you. And so I believe that being grateful for other people's good deeds or good benefits is also good for you. There is a word to the contrary of this spirit in German called Schadenfreude, where someone derives pleasure from another, another's misfortune. What we're talking about today is the exact opposite of that, that when you're grateful for other people's gifts and good things, then you yourself end up benefiting in them and it gives you an overall positive spirit. I always tell my wife that I appreciate all the good things she does at home and even uh, those that I do not see because in typical home, there's a million things that get done without you noticing. And so I believe it happens even at the workplace that when you uh, get down to it, you find that people do stuff, most of it unnoticed and, un uh, and unappreciated. But once in a while, when you notice it, it is good that you single it out and appreciate yeah. it. I'm saying this from a perspective of a team leader, and I know that it makes a difference to your team when you appreciate them. Over to you, to, uh, Table Topics Master. Thank you so much, Davis. Thank you for your insight on detail and noticing, noticing the things that many people actually need. I'd like to call on our final Table Topics speaker, Mpanji Nicholas, are you present? Since I did not get any other volunteers, I'm just using my discretion, really. Mpanji, yeah, oh, lovely. Mpanji Nicholas. We all should write letters expressing thanks to the people who are meaningful to you. What would one of your letters say? We all should write letters expressing thanks to people who are meaningful to us. What would one of your letters say? Over to you, Nicholas. I'm present by the environment. It's just safe for me to watch and listen. Nicholas, shall I repeat that question? Are you ready to take on the topic, Nicholas? And he's muted. Kindly unmute, Nicholas, and go ahead. Okay, we seem to have lost Nicholas. I'll just pick on. Okay, please go ahead, Nicholas. We can hear you now. The environment is only safe for me to, to, 
to only listen and, and watch. I'm not okay. Sure. All right. So I'll pass that. Thank you. I'll pass that on that on to Galaxy A20. Galaxy A20, are you present? Okay, Maggie Petrelli, are you present? I need one final speaker. Monique, is Monique present? Let me let me give it a try. I'm a galaxy. Ah. I don't know what galaxy I am, but <laughs> galaxy. Yeah, 20, you're the culprit. I'm a right. galaxy. Okay, lovely, Doctor Sunshine. Okay, so we all should write letters expressing thanks to people who are I, meaningful to us. If I had what? to write a letter, Deborah. Yes. If I had to write a letter, Deborah, I'd write one, not one, but okay. several letters to all the people represented on this call today. One to you, Table Topics Master. Well done. Okay. Great topics. And good to see you at Kampala Sunrise. Another, to the PM, over 50 guests, 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning is nothing short of hard work. That couldn't be described as serendipity. And most of all, having the founder and reason why Toastmasters is in Uganda, in our midst, and for her to see how far Toastmasters has come, I'm sure this is indeed a great day and one where we can recognize the gratitude pill. If we did not recognize and appreciate what is being done, indeed it would be like wrapping a gift and not giving it to Kampala Sunrise. Well done on such a momentous and phenomenal outstanding meeting. Thank you so much. And what a way to end. Uh, guests, Toastmasters, Toastmasters of the day, thank you so much for being so attentive and participating actively. We've had the first table topic speaker was Rose. The second one was Toastmaster Nora Matovi. The third one was Davis Haguma. And then we had Galaxy A20, who turned out to be Dr. Sunshine, Dr. Christine. So Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. I'd like to hand over to you, Toastmaster of the Day. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Turbo Topics Master Deborah, for handling that session so beautifully. Thank you. Serendipity, serendipity is not your go-to when it comes to gratitude. Intentionality is. I'll now invite our two role takers to give us their reports in one to two minutes. And I'll start with the grammarian, stroke accounter, and then the timer. Juliet, over to you. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day, Agnes. And wow, what a meeting. I have been noting and writing just so much to take note of. Edgar Allan once said, a man's grammar, like Caesar's wife, should not only be pure, but above suspicion of impurity. While I listened through the speeches, I want to thank, first of all, those who were able to use the word of the day. I note that uh, Dovina used the word of the day while she struggled with the pronunciation, it was good. Tovina, well done. And then we had um, Dr. Sunshine there and Rose who handled the, the topics, table topics, the first speaker for the table topics. Well done people. And thank you for table topics master for encouraging people to use the word of the day. Oh, even our first master of the day did use the word of the day uh, just now. I thought the word of the day rhymed quite well with the topic for today, gratitude, because we should be grateful for even things that we do not come across while looking for them. All right, on to the grammarian's reports. There was some 
very good usage of the English language, all the way from uh, the from the from Jesse's. Uh, I think that was an educational moment. He talked. He he gave us great analogies, which included Toastmasters. Joining Toastmasters is like going to a driver's school. Toastmasters is like a buffet. I mean, you pick whatever you need and just run with it. Um, we had um, other great quotes from uh, Judith. What you are will show up in what you do. Another one from James Allen instilled by Judith, you are a total sum of your thoughts. Those were quite many. When it came to the gracious pride and prejudice, I. <laughs> I lost track of what to pick and what to live at. The precious, your speech, that poetry was just amazing. It, he mentioned things like a plethora of students, actions born of fruits, over um, being the cocky teenager that he was. He took the former while loving the latter, the epitome of their feud with this wonderful girl that he just couldn't get enough of. Uh, something surreal surfaced while he was describing this, this, this beautiful lady that he, he met in school, a scenery of greenery. It was just wonderful to listen to that. Um, the other speakers, yes, I picked on a number of other good words that I thought we could look at. Um, Joshua Mukisa mentioned akin to an electric spark which is a comparison, made a statement, uh, an erotic sensation, which was good. If I may, uh, just to, to end with, uh, one of the table topics uh, speakers also, Davis, talked about uncanny habits that he has of uh, not noticing bad in other people. And then he taught me a new word, Cadent fruit, which is taking a person who takes pleasure in other people's most misfortune. And I thought that was really good. In terms of what can be improved, some of the evaluators have already highlighted this to the speakers. Uh, the Aunt Samba mentioned this, no, Deborah, I think, mentioned it to the person she was evaluating. Uh, use of very, very pure poor, you could in, in exchange that for indigent or impoverished or destitute, as she mentioned. I also found that, uh, well, there's just a lot. There were a number of as and arms for most of the speakers. The only person I didn't record that from was uh, Jesse and Dr. Sunshine at the end of it there. Just Joshua Mukisa, I especially wanted to highlight something that he did use quite strategic pauses. However, most when you pause mid-sentence, like Jesse highlighted, it distracts people. We, we, we can flow off your mm -hmm. speech and, and wander into other things. So I, I recommend that when you want to choose where to pause, complete a sentence and pause strategically to allow for you to form or just move on to the next phase or the next section of your speech. Yeah, and uh, just to uh, point out again, there were many opportunities to use the word of the day. Um, one of them was Emma, findings like discovery of fire are really by mere serendipity, I would say. I think also there was another person who missed an opportunity, one of the speakers. My notes are so many and kind of scattered. I may not be able to pick them, but when you think through again, there were a number of opportunities to use the word of the day, but overall, great meeting and over to you, just most of the day. Oh, thank you so much, Juliet, for that report. I'll now call the timer to give is reporting one to two minutes. Henry, over to you. I'll put up my screen shortly.
Okay, uh, thank you, just Master of the Day. Uh, I believe uh, details to do with numbers, time, and all. Um, it would be best to 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 put up uh, a summary. Though for some reason I'm not able to share my screen, I would have I would have loved to put it up. Thank you. Okay. Let me know when you can see my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Not yet, Henry. Oh dear, okay, that's okay. As it comes up. Um, so within the table, I've indicated the time that was allocated to each uh, speaker. And I've, I've uh, been able to uh, def clearly define the roles, that's for the role takers and then the speakers. So each time allocated on the left to the right and uh, what time was used and the summary, I don't know if it's yet up. I mean, if it's up yet. No luck? Can you no. stop and share? Stop and share again. We can't see anything. How about that? Nothing. Not yet. Oh, you sorry. Could sorry. No, okay, I'll pull it up. Sorry, I didn't share. It has come. It's coming, actually. Yeah, it's right there. Okay, in there, so I've indicated what each and every one, um, I'm sorry, the time that was allocated to the different uh, players, that's the role takers and then the speakers, um, the summary. So one to, I would like to highlight on the speakers. Okay, so for number four, that was Juliet. Uh, Juliet was allocated one minute. So in the first uh, section where she introduced uh, what she would do, she took 2.43 uh, minutes, 2.43 minutes. And then uh, overview to 6.5 uh, to running over to the speakers. Speakers, um, Judith was alloc allocated uh, five to seven, just like the rest. Say for Davina, Davina had four to five. She used five, five to 5.35 five, uh, minutes. To the extreme right um, is uh, the evaluator. So the Key, the first evaluators were, were sorry, the, the general evaluators. Um, they all kept within uh, the five minute mark, uh, which I, I would like to commend them for doing that. It was really a great, a great job. And to the extreme right, okay, to your, to your right, uh, other evaluators who came up and they kept within the two minute mark. Uh, thanks for keeping the time. And uh, number six, that was for the table topics. Uh, we had guest rows. Uh, and uh, guest pros are uh, Nora uh, Davis and Dr. Christine, and that's uh, the time that was allocated. Dr. Christine did her best, and she she uh, she delivered her speech within. Her, sorry, she delivered her table topic within 1.2 minutes. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Oh, thank you so much, Henry. All the role takers today, the speakers. Our audience, thank you for being with us this morning. It's been a pleasure being your host. So I'll now hand it over to our president. President Moses, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Th thank you so much, uh, our Toastmaster of the day. Can we just unmute our videos and give uh, Toastmaster Agnes Katshave a big round of applause? So well, we had a very lively meeting, and what a way, what a way. To thank our VPPR, Emmanuel and the team, we had over 50 members in this call, and we were graced today to have the immediate past uh, division director, uh, Division F Director, Dr. Sunshine. She was with us today. Thank you so much for being with us. Our division uh, our division president was with us, uh, Wilson Asimwe. I think he just stepped up into another call. We had uh, Gilbert, our PQ, uh, D also with us in the meeting today. Uh, the chair of the Toastmasters Leadership Institute, Connie was with us today. And our area president, uh, Jesse Ainejuan, was also with us. What a lineup. And of course, forgetting 
Uh, I want for Toastmaster Nora Matovu, alongside all other very good speakers. Thank you so much for today. For all our guests who are in the audience, if you're there, please just drop your details in, drop your details in the chat and try to be able to keep in touch with you as much as possible. We have a number of Toastmasters club joined us today. I know Luboa had a great tech contingent led by IPPPP, IPP, IPP, and, 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 and President Enoch and your team. Uh, Bukoto Toastmasters, Kampala Toastmasters. Who, which one have I left out? I saw uh, uh, Patricia of Tinder Toastmasters and all our different clubs. If I have forgotten you, please, my apologies but we do appreciate you so much for being with us today. Thank you all and to all our speakers for giving us a very good audience, a very good uh, meeting. We appreciate you, well prepared, and we we'll look forward to a very, 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 very uh, meeting next month. The lineup for next month is already full, so we urge uh, if you can take your role today and let's ensure to be able to keep the passion and let's make the magic on and keep going. So thank you so much. I know our time is 20 minutes past the time allocated. We do apologize for that. Uh, but we look forward to hosting you. Our first meeting happens every first Thursday of the month, 7.30 to 8, 6.20 a.m. to 7.30. And then we'll have two meetings. Saturday meeting is in the month of uh, August 21st and 28th. We look forward to seeing you all. Thank you. And have a great, great day ahead. Thank you all. I can just end the meeting here. Then we're going to the rest of the conversation as we chat along the way. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Christine, for coming and staying. Around. Always a pleasure. Please uh, reach out to the guests. I see some guests. There's some guests. You might get some members. Over to you. Sure, sure. Yes, uh, we have we have Hilda. Hilda, do you want to unmute and tell us how you found us and what you what you liked about the meeting? Hello. Good morning. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. I'm Hilda Korean. I just shared the flyer on his WhatsApp status, and we, I'm a member of the Rotaract Club, and I'm a Rotaractor, so I, I really want to learn public speaking. So when I saw the flyer, I was curious, and then I just, I just right away signed in. So this is a fantastic station. I've able to learn so much from the evaluators and uh, I'm, I'm really happy I, I joined in. This is good. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, Hilda. Kindly share with us <laughs> thanks so, much, so that we can get in touch with you. And thanks, Arias, for sharing. I think it's uh, good to see a number of actors join us today. Sure. Yeah. Any other guests? Guests? Kat? Kaisa? Kaisa. Thanks. I think Nicholas has shared his details. Uh, Henry, Henry, well done. We look forward to seeing you uh, on the stage uh, soon. Uh, so hopefully we can get to see you soon. Yes, Aruho Joshua. <laughs> Hi Aruho, Joshua, how are you? Joshua, you are muted. Well done, team. Well done. Well done, Henry. What a what a succinct yet detailed report. A spreadsheet. Wow. <laughs> I liked it too. That was a new one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very clever.
Thanks, Alex. So, Andarius, well done with your evaluation. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, Darius, actually, we're looking forward to the next speech. Eh? Yes, I think uh, I have two <laughs> speeches lined up in August, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, good. Yeah. And good, I'll also good, be good. TMOD for the first August meeting. Wow. Yes. Wow. Excellent. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. talk, talk to Agnes. Agnes, is, uh, she has a rule book when it comes to that role. Yeah, indeed. Indeed, uh, she delivered a great job. I'll definitely have to pick some notes from her. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yes, well done, well done. Uh, Deo, your speech, all of us are looking forward to this meeting, Gloria, one day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> wow. I need to get some coaching for that use of English language, that poetic thing. Just amazing. The guy is just poetic, man. Eh? The gracious is so good. So, so poetic. I, I really appreciate it. You may have to do a class on, po on, 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 on poetry. Honestly, it's not there. Please don't see the talent. <laughs> Education moments. <laughs> I was. Um, I was, I was speaking to Agnes the other time and uh, I was taking her through some of the things. Um, I didn't know uh, people were actually interested in that poetry bit, uh, the language, the beautiful language. And I was telling her where it actually comes from. So the way I, I speak, the way I speak because I, I study mostly the speakers from the 18th and the 19th century, especially from the US, because they were very, very descriptive and very poetic. And uh, that's, that's, I read a lot of Gawa. I read that, I read a lot. And uh, that is where I borrow my beautiful language from. And, uh, the reason why uh, in the early days, I sounded so, I would call it staunch, that uh, sometimes you could barely understand was, um, I was um, you, you know, when you're starting out something, you're trying to figure out a style. This is a style I'm also actually just trying to figure out. Uh, I haven't fully figured it out properly. And that's why I'm improving um, slowly with time and uh, yeah, so maybe uh, the next time I do an educational moment, I'll craft something around uh, the things I've learned and uh, it's an, uh, it will be an amazing pleasure and privilege uh, to share the little knowledge that I have. Yeah, thank you. Otherwise, thank you for appreciating. Um, that is uh, what fuels me, uh, well, the feedback, the, the evaluations. Uh, I couldn't get better without them. I appreciate them so much. <laughs> I will be studying you from now. That's a good one, Dan. <laughs> okay, Agne, thank you for being a great Toastmaster of the day. Everything was really organized. Job well done. A lot of learning from you indeed. Otherwise, guys, may you have a lovely day. Thanks, thanks Judith, and thanks for your speech too. Bye bye. Thank you for guys. Now. Enjoy, enjoy the bye. weekend. Yeah. Alex. That was very good. Yes. <laughs> Alex, have Alex. a lovely day. Thanks for Thank the evaluation. Alex from Gaba. Very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. Good day. Yeah. Henry, Henry, Thank well done. Thank you, Judy. Mm -hmm. hey, man, you nailed it. You nailed it. You connected the, the project somehow. somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I was struggling with uh, that bit of uh, achieving the education goals, that <laughs> communication bit with a story. Yeah, I, I saw. I saw you had a speech and you had a project, and they were two different things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Brenda yeah. caught it. Brenda was very quick to catch it, but Anne kind of Anne kind of exonerated you because Anne said that first she could get your communication style. So Anne got you off the hook in her. And that's why I like Brand Robin. Because different evaluations have different opinions or different voices or thoughts. 
So when you get more than one evaluator, it's kind of good for a speaker to actually know that there's a different voice in the evaluation. Because I also wanted to bring out the fiction bit of it. But uh, I, I looked at that style last minute. So merging it very nicely, wasn't uh, you know, it, uh, it needed a very good thought. Yeah, yeah. I thought you did. Yeah. But yeah, like Brenda was right, so Brenda did see, so it wasn't obvious to many people. Brenda was right to call it out that what's your communication style? You didn't give it to us, but uh, Anne, Anne was a bit very empathetic and she tried to look for it and she forced herself to get it and she got it. Yeah, but yeah, both evaluators are right in the evaluation. And there's no wrong evaluation usually, by the way. And there's no, yeah, there's never a wrong evaluation. Emma is frozen. So okay. guys, the weekend has just started. Enjoy. We got some All questions right. to reach out to them and see the next meeting. A great day, everyone. Bye. Bye.